Happy New Year, everybody. Are you all excited for 2024? Here's hoping it's a good year. And to get started, I thought I would try and look into my crystal ball or, you know, crystal mixing glass and predict what we're gonna be drinking this year. I'd love to know your thoughts as well, any trends that you've noticed recently. So please make sure to comment below. Now, I have to admit, I'm not really on TikTok, so goodness knows what the next Parmesan espresso martini or Negroni spagliato phenomenon will be. So these ones are more just based on things that I've noticed serving people across the bar. So number one is sustainable and local booze. I think people are generally becoming more aware of what they're drinking and drinking local helps reduce, you know, transport costs and so environmental impact. Um, and the market has really diversified from obviously just a few big brands dominating in every category. And then the price of these boutique local spirits has been coming down a bit because distilleries are streamlining and they're expanding. Um, so that was obviously previously a bit of a barrier um, to entry, which is being lowered. And then you're also seeing some really cool innovations in sustainability, like we've got these little bag in box wines that my friends make here, um, goon bags as they're affectionately known in Australia, but they used to have a pretty bad reputation, whereas these are really good wines, but in a more environmentally friendly packaging. And it also means you don't have to finish the whole bottle, but it also means you can drink two without having to open a new one. So good and bad. Um, and then at Bomba, we also buy a lot of spirits in these sort of bigger format totes and things now when we're batching, which just means a lot less glass going in the recycling and these can be reused. So all pretty smart. Number two, no and low drinking. The non-alcoholic movement obviously has been happening for a while now, but it really doesn't seem to be slowing down. And the products I think are getting better and better. And just because you're not drinking or you're trying to pace yourself doesn't mean that you shouldn't get a delicious and real grown up drink. Obviously non-alcoholic beers have come a long way um, and I've had a few that you know I wouldn't be able to pick as um, not having any alcohol. Uh, but the spirits are really improving as well. I'm a big fan of Banks Botanical, which is actually made close to here in the Yarra Valley. We have done some collabs with them on Instagram, so make sure you're followed at with Cara Divine for some extra non-alcoholic content as well. Number three is fun drinks. So this is a bit of a personal campaign of mine and I've actually written an article on it, which I will drop below. But after years of really kind of austere and serious drinks with minimal garnishes and just like the perfect ice cube and quite a plain glass, I think the bartenders are starting to have a bit of fun with drinks again, even if it is a little bit ironic. So you've got disco classics like the Japanese Slipper and the Grasshopper, they're back with a vengeance. Um, and when I was traveling in Europe, I had some really fun serves. So I had like a martini style drink, which was served in a little sort of ceramic pond bowl with some drops of um, like a green oil as the lily pads. And it even came with a little garden gnome. And I think, you know, if the drinks are good, you're allowed to be a little bit gimmicky. Um, and I'm much, I'm much more likely to remember that drink, which was all really fun and just creative um, than I do all of the kind of perfectly made, but very pared back martinis I've had. Number four is alternative wines. So when I first started working at Bomba, which is a Spanish restaurant, so we have a lot of um, Spanish wine, but it was a bit of a hard slog to get people to try the varietals that they maybe didn't know. So things like Albarino um, or Mencia, because they just didn't know them. Um, but nowadays people, I think, actively want to try different things. So it's much easier. And then obviously you've got your slightly funky wines, things like pet nats and orange wines, which have really crept into the mainstream. So people aren't freaked out anymore if their wines may be a little bit cloudy because they know that it's all delicious flavor. So I think that we will see more winemakers breaking the mold and trying new things as the collective palette gets broader. Now I haven't actually made, um, done much, many videos on wine, but I do love it. It's honestly probably the thing that I drink the most of um, and I know plenty about it as well. So please let me know in the comments if you would like to see me branch out and do a little bit of wine content too. Now, lucky number five is savory flavors. So it was quite funny actually, I was voting in a competition for bar menu of the year just at the end of last year. And so I had to look at different cocktail lists from different bars around Australia. Um, and one of them, I was actually halfway through reading their food menu because it had both um, before I realized that it was the food menu and not their cocktails 
because the dishes had things like edamame and toast and tomatoes and cheese. And honestly, these are now all things that I've seen incorporated into cocktails. So I think we're gonna go way past the dirty martini into uncharted savory territory this year. In fact, one of my favorite drinks I've ever created um, uses snow peas in it. So it's like a snow pea infused rum kind of daiquiri situation. So maybe I'll have to get ahead of the curve and show you that one. Let me know what you think. Do you um, disagree with anything, agree with anything? Have I missed anything out? And I'd obviously love to know what's gonna be in your glass this year. Drink trends of 2024. So now you know.